Hi, and welcome back to WST100. You should now be in Module 1, where we will talk about feminisms and women's studies, what they are, what their relationship is to one another, and what they have to do with you. Also, remember that this is just one part of information that you need to gather. So, there are other videos, more course readings, and that is also why you have homework and four class assignments. Make sure to check the syllabus for any changes or any information that you may need. So, because you do have so much information, let's go ahead and dive in. Feminisms. Feminists. Feminists can be defined really as a person who believes in and or works towards social, economic, and political equity for women. Over time, Feminists and feminism have changed and expanded the moniker of feminist and feminism. The term feminist is often a controversial term that many people uh, have preconceived notions about, even though they don't really know anybody who defines themselves as feminist. Or if they do know someone who defines themselves as feminist, that's the only way to be a feminist. And so a few facts. We have several different types of feminisms. So there's liberal feminisms, radical feminisms, uh, Marxist feminisms, indigenous and pre-colonial feminism, black feminism, cultural feminism, eco-feminism, transnational feminism, visionary feminism, and most recently, we have things like digital feminisms. We didn't have technology such as Twitter, uh, Facebook, and other uh, social media platforms years ago. So when we think about feminists and feminism changing over time and adding to this idea of feminisms, then we see how there can be splintered branches. However, at the core, anybody can be a feminist. Feminists believe in and work towards social justice for all people, and there are many ways to be a feminist. Please check out this video linked here to see what a feminist looks like. Women's studies is an interdisciplinary field of teaching and research that puts gender at the center of inquiry. Women's studies understands that it examines socially and con uh, culturally constructed uh, definitions of gender and gender roles. Drawing on academic areas such as history, psychology, sociology, media sociology, literary criticism, and anthropology, women's studies crosses the boundaries of traditional disciplines, raising important questions regarding the way we have organized ourselves, uh, our chief uh, social and political institutions, and knowledge itself. If we think about how we know something, who gets to know, and who gets to disseminate that information, we understand why women's studies is so important. Women's studies also rethinks the way roles, women's roles and experiences throughout history. Traditional disciplines like psychology and sociology either excluded women uh, at one point or I had very misconceived notions about who and what women were. Therefore, women's studies fills the gaps, offering corrections to and uh, highlighting women's lives. When we talk about women's studies, we are also talking about how the framing of, of many things comes into being. So women's studies uses a social constructionist framework for examining the world. Social constructionism is a theory of knowledge that holds the characteristics typically thought to be immutable and solely biological, such as gender or race, and ability, and are products of human definition and interpretation shaped by cultural and historical context. As such, social constructionism highlights the ways in which cultural categories like men and women, black, white, are concepts uh, created, changed, and reproduced through historical processes within institutions and cultures. So we all understand that a handshake means or what the American flag symbolizes because we 
I'll accept the socially constructed and shared meaning attached to these items or acts. When we think about women's studies and social constructionism, women's studies raises questions about gender as a category that is socially uh, constructed and cultural variable. What it means, it, this doesn't necessarily mean that we, women's studies doesn't recognize bodily variation. What it does is it says that the ideas that we have around body variation is constructed categories based on bodily features. We attach meaning to these categories, and then we place people into those categories by considering their bodies or bodily aspects. For example, the one drop rule. The one drop rule states that if you have one drop of black blood, then you are black. Regardless of their appearance, individuals with any African ancestry are considered black. In contrast, racial conceptions and thus racial categories are different in Brazil, where many individuals with African ancestry are considered to be white. So therefore, women's studies acknowledges that gender is co-constituted or co-constructed with other social uh, constructions. Being poor uh, and a woman and being privileged and a woman have very different meanings depending on how the category of woman as well as the category of class is defined. In women's studies, we examine both men and women not as binary constructions, but but being attentive to gender means that women's studies considers how the culturally specific ways of acting and appearing masculine and feminine must both be examined. Women's studies considers these other social categories that shape men's and women's everyday experience. If you want to know more about what you can do with a women's studies degree and what it entails, check out this video from Wichita State. Women's studies emerge from a political movement. That is why feminism, at its core, is political ideology. Like a few other areas of academia, African American studies, uh, indigenous studies, Chicano studies, women's studies emerged from a social justice movement during the middle of the 20th century. This movement is known as women's movement or feminist movements. If we think in the United States, our interactions, interpersonal, communal, and structural, are all due to categories of difference, we refer to this term of ascription. And ascription is the term that refers to the fact that we are all born into specific social categories or ascribed status, as birth includes at at birth includes our race, class, position, gender, as well as our ability. Some social categories are considered the norm, such as being white, male, middle class, heterosexual, and able-bodied, while those who do not fit the norm are viewed as other. Other in America, women, non-white, poor, non-heterosexual, dis, uh, disabled, or differently abled are categories of otherness because they are put on the margins and not centered. So therefore, the norm becomes normalcy or natural, and the other becomes a variant of that, or marginalized or decentered. Within women's studies, we look at how norms are created and maintained through social institutions, such as education, the workplace, religion, family, medicine, health, media, and many others. So to unpack things, we make sure that we look at these institutions and the ways in which social constructionism affects the, the ways in which we live our lives, but also the way we understand our lives. What women's studies is not, is not about blaming individuals or groups for the oppression and inequality that exists within our society. 
Please note, this course is not here to say that you are wrong in your ideology or your beliefs. What this course is here to do is understand how things have come to be. Women's Studies is acknowledging how oppression and inequality affects everyone. And Women's Studies also is about analyzing and understanding inequalities for the purposes of moving forward uh, and moving towards social justice. Check out the additional videos to learn more about feminism, women, gender, and feminist studies, as well as watch the next module on a brief history of U.S. feminisms.